Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining this live town hall discussion on the, uh, the impacts of the coronavirus outbreak on small businesses. Uh, and the forms of relief available to small business owners here in the South Sound. Uh, this town hall is being hosted by Congressman Heck, who represents Washington's 10th Congressional District. Uh, we're also very fortunate to have with us tonight two very special guests. Jeremy Field, who is the Region 10 Administrator for the U.S. Small Business Administration, where he oversees small business initiatives and program operations for the entire Pacific Northwest. And we're very lucky also to have with us Carrie Hurd, who is the District Director for the Seattle SBA office, where she manages SBA programs through most of Washington and some of Northern Idaho. So, <laughs> Thank you to both for joining us. Um, we have been collecting questions from, from constituents through social media and through constituent mail, and we'll be using those questions to drive this discussion. If you're watching this video live on Facebook and have a question, uh, please ask it in the comments section for this video, and we'll try to get to some of those questions coming in from live viewers. And before we get to questions, I'm going to hand it over to Congressman Heck and, we'll, uh, and then Administrative Field for some opening remarks. Congressman. Thank you, Bobby, very much. Thank all of you out there for joining us. This is the second in a series of telecount halls that we're holding about the government response to the coronavirus epidemic, pandemic that is uh, around us everywhere and doing great damage not only to our health, but to our economy. Uh, as you all will recall, not quite three weeks ago, Congress enacted the CARES Act, a $2.2 trillion a stimulus bill to help mitigate the effects both on public health side and on the economic side. It was the third bill we passed and it won't be the last bill we pass. We'll be getting to more later. Uh, notably, it included major investments in public health. The principal thing I want you to remember in this regard is we will not halt the economic decline until we halt the virus. We are at war with the virus and we must win. It also included other means of economic assistance Unemployment compensation was enhanced and eligibility was extended. In fact, unemployment compensation was increased by $600 per week and an additional 13 weeks were made available to people who qualify. And thirdly, it had a significant investment in assistance to small businesses. Uh, they are the economic engine of our country. That's what we're here to talk about mostly tonight. Uh, and in fact, I can't think of anything more important than what is it that we're going to do to help small businesses survive. And I can't think of two people better qualified to join in this conversation uh, than Carrie Hurd and Jeremy Field. Jeremy, as Bobby indicated, to whom I will turn the microphone over in a moment, is the Region 10 Director of the Small Business Administration and incredibly well qualified to assume that role. He worked for Senator Risch for nine years uh, of Idaho, who was the chair of the Small Business Committee. And Carrie Hurd is the District Director for the SBA out of Seattle. She is also a retired major in the National Guard. I like to remind her of that because we're grateful for her service. So here's the thing. We passed this great big bill, $2.2 trillion, 350 billion of which was for the small business assistance. Our goal was to be big and bold and fast and to the degree possible, utilize existing distribution channels. The fact of the matter is it's big and it's complex and in its implementation, there's gonna be some difficult challenges. The people at the Small Business Administration are working incredibly hard, dare I say, around the clock to get this as clear and clean and available to small businesses as fast as they can. There are a lot of questions arising out of it, and we're very fortunate that these two people are willing to be a part of this conversation tonight and answer those questions. So if our technology is working, I am pleased to ask Jeremy Field if he has some comments he would like to make. Jeremy, are you with us? I am. Thank you so much, Congressman. I, uh, the video, I'm still going to work on the video after my opening comments, but. Okay, right we now, have audio, of Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a faceless bureaucrat at this time. So uh, thanks so much for uh, letting us be here today to talk about the SBA and the new uh, Paycheck Protection Program that, that the Congress has given us to help the, every small business in America that's struggling because of economic injury due to this pandemic. Um, it's gonna be an incredible program. It is already helping people. We have uh, <clears throat> over 4,000 lenders now in the pipeline. Uh, when, we, when we first started offering loans on fr last Friday, we started out the morning with 400 lenders, and now we have over 4,000. We've given out uh, 
through through the banking system over 100 billion in loans to over you know, 400,000 dollars or 400,000 small businesses. So we have a lot of positive going on. And that's all due to the hard work between the, the, the Congress and the White House to make this thing possible. So the SBA's job in this through the page, uh, Paycheck Protection Program is to educate and to execute. Uh, early on, when we first uh, were asked to provide disaster assistance for the entire country, we had our traditional disaster loans. And those are a great, pro uh, there, it's a great program. It's designed to help Puerto Rico and Houston when a hurricane or a tsunami hits, our Office of Disaster Assistance is on the ground and they're really good at their jobs. We'll have dozens of people out there in a central location helping people work through their disaster loan, answering their questions. But because of the nature of the pandemic, that's just not possible. And we had to funnel everyone through a website that was just not ready to handle all the, the, um, the load of every small businessman in America applying for a disaster loan. So it took us about two weeks. Uh, the SBA is a very reliable tugboat. We help businesses start, grow, expand, and recover. But due to the nature of this pandemic and the role we were asked to play, we've had to build aircraft carriers. And so now where we had started out with the website that, could, that kept crashing and couldn't handle the load, we can now process 2,000 loans every second and through our EIDL disaster loan uh, program. And EIDL stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And we're really proud of the progress that we've made. It's, it's due in large part because of public-private partnerships. Uh, great American companies are helping us be more efficient to respond to the needs of our small businesses. The pay pay Paycheck Protection Program, though, is a different thing. Uh, like I said, uh, this is a, it's a game changer. So the, the Paycheck Protection Program allows a small business to apply for a forgivable loan that is 100% backed by the SBA. Those loans can be up to $10 million, and they can be used for your payroll, for your uh, mortgage or lease payments, as well as your utility bill payments. And what this does is it allows every man and woman who's employed by a small business in America to be paid for eight weeks to get their health care benefits, to be able to make their lease payment on the space that they you know, work or their mortgage. And it lets them keep the lights on with the utilities. And we can all stay home for eight weeks, do what we need to do to keep one another safe, to lower that bell curve that we're all paying such close attention to on the news so that... Congress, our congressional leaders like Congressman Heck, and our healthcare professionals can look at the data that we're collecting and make the next solid policy decision for the United States of America. So it's, it's a wonderful program. The, the SBA is very proud to execute it. Uh, but like we had an early, early on with uh, the disaster loans, we have had <clears throat> our struggles getting everyone on, on board. I told you we started with 400 lenders last Friday. Now it's 4,000. We're going from tugboat status again up to uh, our aircraft carrier. And so we ask you to be patient with us and then being patient with our, our private partners. We've asked banks to do something they've never done before. And now they are starting to feel the load the, the SBA has been feeling for the last three weeks. And they're doing an incredible job. Like I said, over $100 billion has been uh, approved for PPP loans. And tomorrow our sole proprietors and independent contractors will be able to apply for this program as well and be able to get these important funds into their pockets. So as we keep moving forward, um, just know that the SBA continues to work long hours into the night, uh, seven days a week to make these programs better and more efficient every day. And we are so grateful that Congressman Heck invited Carrie and I on today so that we could talk a little bit more about these and answer your questions. And with that, I'll, I'll yield back my time. Okay, um, so then we can get right into the questions. First one will be uh, pretty, pretty broad. This is a good one to start with. And it's from Sarah via Facebook. Uh, I'm a very small business owner and would like to learn more about support for small businesses. What kind of support is there? Cool. Carrie, do you want to take this question? Sure. Um, so oh. the, oh, Congressman Heck, please. Well, I was about to toss it to you after saying, I think the very first thing they should do is go to the SBA website. Uh, but above and beyond that, to get specific, I thought I would turn it over to you. So here you go, Carrie. All right, I got it. Um, 
Well, we have a lot of resources and many of those resources are actually pro bono. So we have the small business development centers, the women's business centers, SCORE, and these are highly qualified individuals who can help walk you through the resources available, help you work with your business plan, um, take advantage of opportunities and overcome challenges. And like I said, that's a pro bono business model. They also do some very low cost training um, to help you in um, be able to really help your business be efficient. And hopefully if you can work on some of those techniques that you'll actually be more efficient when you come out of this crisis than you were going into the crisis. Carrie, is it not true that those small business centers are often located out in communities in places like economic development uh, councils or boards? If somebody wants to know, well, how do I find one of those? What's the answer? Um, I would encourage you to go to the WSBDC.org website. Um, they have 28 counselors across the state and even in some rural areas up by OMAC. What are those initials again? Maybe you can use uh, military terms because sometimes the S's and the F's get mixed up. One more time, please. Uh, W-S-B-D-C, and I'll spell it phonetically, Whiskey Sierra Bravo Delta Charlie dot O-R-G. Thank you, Major Hurd. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. Next question we have is from uh, Anne Marie via Facebook. Uh, about how do I apply for the Paycheck Protection Program? Carrie, do you want to lead? Sure. So the the Paycheck Protection Program is a private-public partnership, so this is where you would actually apply um, to a commercial lender. And in Washington, we have um, high participation in the program. We have incredibly strong community lenders and national lenders who participate. So I would start with the bank where you currently bank um, and work with them. If they're not able to um, facilitate you, please contact, contact our office. We have a site, um, sba.gov. And on that site, we have participating lenders who may be able to help you. And um, we know that some of the lenders are, um, they're overwhelmed themselves. They're working long hours. If they can't get to your application, we may be able to direct you to another lender to make sure that you get some service. Just to remind people about how big and fast this challenge came at us, the Treasury Department issued their guidance last Thursday night, the night before those same bankers were supposed to make this program available. They had overnight notice of some of the conditions. And of course, they've been changing throughout the week to make things clearer and simpler and easier. So as Carrie indicates, there is information at the SBA website about uh, participating lenders in the area. And there, uh, you should also know that if you don't have a banking relationship, that they're also coming out with recommendations and guidance for how certain fintech companies can make these loans as well. Bobby, next question. Okay, next question is uh, about nonprofits. Are there, and this comes from uh, Carol via Facebook, uh, are there any benefits available for a 501c3? Yes. There is. I'm sorry. I thought you looked like you were going to. Jeremy, don't go quiet on us. Do you want to take this one? <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah, there are benefits for 501c3s, uh, yeah, both under the disaster loans and the Paycheck Protection Program. Both are um, available. So 501c3s and C19s, uh, small businesses, independent contractors, even religious institutions. There's a lot of different people that qualify for the Paycheck Protection Program. And I'm sure Congressman Heck will tell you more about it later, but Congress is looking at some of the people that weren't qualified through the PPP in this first round of funding, or that are probably gonna be included in the next round. But um, yeah, I mean, the easiest way to learn about it now really is to call the bank, wherever you have a savings account, wherever your checking account is, check with them first because you need to have a checking account to be able to get the paper the ppp loan 
but uh, but yeah, it's it's the information's out there. In fact, there's often a uh, web-based portal that you can go to to see if you your organization qualifies for a PPP. But by, by just spreading this out to so many different financial institutions, it's really helped us to have a lot of different partners to be able to explain the benefits of the programs. So go to your local credit union, go to your local bank, and you're able, going to be able to get a lot of good information. So 501c3s, and as Jeremy indicates, 501c19s, those are veteran service organizations are available or eligible for PPP. A more broader or a broader set of nonprofits are available for idle, as I recall. And so you, if you're not a 501c3 or 19, you may want to check that out as well. And of course, Jeremy is correct. As we begin to develop CARES 2.0 or the next bill uh, to help us stimulate the economy and mitigate the damage, there is a lot of discussion about how we can make tweaks and improvements on what we did before. But above and beyond that, I think it's likely in fact, I think it's very likely that Congress will appropriate additional money for this program, the PPP program, uh, because the demand is so high, because the need is so great. So I think you're going to see a second installment of a quite large amount of money to help out small businesses. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, how is my spot? Uh, excuse me, sorry, this comes from Bill via Facebook. How is my small business supposed to survive when it has no employees. And as an owner, I can't collect unemployment and can't get assistance from the government because I have no employees. Well, you can collect unemployment, as a matter of fact. Uh, and it depends on the structure of your small business and how much you've paid yourself, but it's, not, it's simply not true that you don't uh, qualify at all for unemployment. In addition to increasing the regular unemployment by $600 per week, Congress also did something else for the first time. Uh, they stood up a program for 1099 employees. These are people that participate in the gig economy that are not regular salaried or hourly people at an employer. Now, that is not yet online. The Department of Labor had to issue guidance and guidelines about how to piggyback onto the state-based delivery system for unemployment. I think it's going to be available on April 15th to 18th and benefits would be eligible or available two weeks later and it would be at the same level as regular unemployment, whatever the calculation based on your wages is, plus $600 per week. And there are other, form, and there are other forms of assistance for you, even if you do not have employees. Carrie, did you wanna mention one or two of those? Yeah, so um, he actually can apply under the CARES Act for either the PPP or the EIDL um, and include his wages that he pays himself and that could be commissions it could be um net income from self-employment and add in those state and local payroll taxes that he would pay as well okay uh the next question comes from uh, a live facebook viewer laurel who asks uh should i reapply for the disaster loan if i already did that last week Uh, that's a great question. The, the idle loans are, like, like we said earlier, the, the, the original website was a little clunky. So if you applied before March 30th, yes, you need to reapply. If you applied after March 30th with our streamlined process, it can take as little as five minutes to get through. You will have to reapply. So yes, the bad news is if it was before March 30th, you need to reapply. But the good news is, is that the process is now so much more painless than it was before, and it won't take you very long. So that's a very good question. Okay, uh, and going to the next question um, about improving the application process. This is from Amy via Facebook, uh, who is asking uh, if it can be made more simple to apply for benefits for small business owners. Jeremy, are you taking that one or? I, I, I felt bad. I'm going to wait for Congressman Heck to direct traffic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> please don't, Jeremy. It's certainly not like I can answer that. Question. <laughs> I'll okay. tell you, that, and uh, it's a it's another really great question. The, the answer is, is that we are continually looking at how to make things a little bit easier. 
We've done that with the idle loans. We're, we're trying to do that with the, the PPP and our, on our lender side. Our lenders are being very creative in the ways that they're uh, you know, reaching out to their clients. So um, you will see efficiencies because we're just going to keep trying to make the product easier and easier. But, but like I said, we went from a, a website that just crashed to a website that can process 2,000 loans in, in one second. So, and, and then we, we streamlined even what we were asking for in the initial ask for information for the loan. So uh, if you have suggestions or anything like that, any, anyone that's on this, this uh, FaceTime call, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and, and we'll certainly look at if it's a good way to improve our services. You know, I, I can't help as a movie buff to think back to a line in a guilty pleasure movie I've always enjoyed called The Postman with Kevin Costner, it was a post-apocalyptic movie. And the postman played by Kevin Costner kept saying, things are getting better all the time. And they are. All of these questions that you ask that are so good about why is this so complicated? In fact, the SBA is taking steps forward to simplify, make it quicker and easier. But again, they were inundated. They were overwhelmed with an avalanche of applications in a very short period of time to stand up this massive program. Uh, I understand the frustration out there. In fact, businesses are going through an incredibly difficult time. I had a call a couple of nights ago from a local business person here in the community I live in Olympia, and she was beside herself. In fact, she was in tears. She had successfully operated a pretty good sized small business for 31 years. She'd gone into a bank where she had a banking relationship for more than 10 years and applied for PPP and was turned down. And she just wondered to herself, is this business that I've worked my heart and soul to build over a 31 year period of time at risk. Am I going to go away after all these decades? There's a good news uh, story here. The next day, the president of the bank wrote her back and said, I'm sorry, it was wrong to turn you down, you have your loan. But there's a, in the meantime, an awful lot of businesses facing an incredible amount of frustration with what's going on here. And Jeremy asked for patience and you know, Jeremy, I, I'm old school. Uh, I remember one of my favorite prayers, God grant me patience and grant it to me now. Uh, we, we obviously need to figure this out as quickly as we can. And there probably isn't a soul anywhere that isn't working their heart out to do just that. Great. Uh, next question is uh, from constituent mail. Uh, so this is mailed into the office. I am a small business owner and file my taxes as such. I do not pay myself as an employee. Can I file for unemployment or any other resources outside of the SBA loan? Yes, we just covered that. You can, if you pay yourself in any form, whether it's commissions or a regular wage or withdrawal, you can. And you do apply, and you can apply uh, for both the idle and for PPP if you have if you have any employees. Okay, uh, and the next one comes from Dana, uh, who a uh, Facebook Live viewer, uh, who asks, when will we start receiving the money? Jeremy. I, I'd love up. to take that question. Yeah, no, this, is, this is the question for people who have gone through all the hoops and now they're waiting. Uh, as we said, um, and, and it just, I hope we don't sound too repetitive, but this is just something we've never done before. I mean, in one day, we did more loans in number and in size than the SBA had done in the last five years. And so this re requires a lot of coordination on the back side, just on the policy side of making regulations with both the Treasury and the SBA. So there's a lot of coordination between those two departments, our, our two agencies on how to make this work. But then we also have to be considerate of our, <clears throat> our banking partners that have been asked to administer a program that they've never had to administer before. So originally we were asking for a five day turnaround on the PPP and we, we just heard unanimously from the banking community that this was not a time frame that they could make happen. And now they're asking for uh, some banking is they're, they're asking that they do it in two, 10 days, but some of our mid-sized lenders even can't meet that demand. So uh, the, the question is, is our, our goal posts keep moving? The standard is still to get the funds out as soon as we can. And funds have been distributed. There, there are funds that have been distributed out there. 
but there's there's just so much in the pipeline right now. That so Jeremy, be, Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. So let's parse this. Let's reverse engineer it. Obviously, on the other end of this are people who are facing matters of survival, and in some instances, they're literally desperate. And uh, asking them to be patient, given what you're confronting, is a completely reasonable thing for you to do. But on their end of things, you, you, you might imagine uh, how that is received. Help us understand if the loan's been applied for and approved, why can't the money get from here to here? That all has to do with our back end process and the ability of lenders to turn this around. There's a lot of different things. Uh, our, our lenders have been asking for guaranteed notes and uh, SBA has been trying to, uh, obviously this is not the PPP, loan is not something we've had a note for before with 100% guarantee. So the banks have received instruction to, you know, it's been a creative process. And like I said, we, so when the, the law was passed, not this Friday, but the last, over the weekend, we want regulations. Typically there's a 30 day wait period and the federal register for comments to happen. We've jumped that gun <laughs> and because we, we just needed to get going. And so we've, 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 what we've done is a lot of people keep saying the phrase that we're building the plane as we fly it. We are, we are building a program and interpreting law for the first time while we run a program that the law has asked us to implement. And that has just, uh, on, on, on the regulatory side, we've gone as fast as we could. In fact, for federal standards, we're moving at lightning speed. And then on the private side, we're working with partners and, and a lot of partners who have never actually worked with the SBA system before. And we're answering their questions as fast as we can. So there's the demand, we, we feel the demand from every side, both from our, our congressional leadership and White House who's asked us to get this done quickly to the people whose livelihoods have been threatened and need those paychecks as soon as possible in many cases yesterday. And then also from our partners that we've asked, our private partners that we've asked to step up to figure out a whole new system and, and, and they're working out their systems on how they're gonna provide this many loans in sh a, such a short amount of time. So the answer is it's complicated, it's a dynamic problem and we continually are, are looking for ways to make it faster. Well, as you said, you're feeling pressure from a lot of sides, including from this member of Congress, but that, that fact notwithstanding, Jeremy, I want you to know how deeply appreciative I and lots of people are for all the incredible efforts that you and your team are making to make the best possible situation out of this. Bobby, next question. Okay, next we have a question about mortgages actually for small businesses. Uh, this comes from constituent mail as well. Uh, I'm writing to you to please ask Congress to put a freeze on commercial mortgage payments. I own a small office park. My tenants are not working and will be having a tough time making rent payments for the next few months while the coronavirus is keeping businesses closed. Several tenants have contacted me and just want to fold. Uh, please advocate for a freeze on commercial loan payments for three months after the stay at home order is, uh, is lifted. Uh, this would help all small businesses greatly. If I can suspend my payments, then I can pass that on to my tenants. Well, thanks for the question. Um, what we have attempted to do is provide uh, robust assistance in several forms to not just this owner of that small business park, but to the individual tenants as well, so that they can continue to make their payments. That's the whole point of PPP and uh, also to some degree the EIDL program. Uh, there are some difficult constitutional issues with just mandating a freeze on mortgages. If it is not a federally held mortgage, that is to say, ultimately through, for example, one of the government sponsored enterprises, uh, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, uh, because the truth of the matter is it's a little bit like that old game we played as children, uh, musical chairs. When the music stops, somebody is without a chair. So to freeze that mortgage payment, of course, means that somebody who holds that paper isn't getting paid as well. And our, our effort, the thrust of what we've tried to do is make assistance available both to the owner of that park who is eligible for some of these small business uh, uh, programs, as well as the individual tenants. Okay. Oh, oh, and we have video Look now. Look who has joined us. Hello, everyone. 
Uh, you're oh, probably sure. wishing I'd left the video <laughs> off, but I'm, I am here now. Nice beard, dude. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 beard game to beard game, I, I respect that. So thank you very much. <laughs> Bobby, next question. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, also from constituent mail. I closed my office March 17th. On that same day, I applied for a disaster loan via the SBA. Now I'm being informed that since my loan was not funded by April 3rd, I cannot get both the disaster loan and PPP loans. Uh, this needs to be corrected as we need to have access to both of these programs. Um, Carrie? Yeah, Carrie, um, what? Well, well, actually, if you apply, you can apply for both. You just can't use the both loans for the same purpose. So you could use your idle to pay for your mortgage payments and your PPP to pay for your or for your uh, payroll. If you use 75% of the PPP loan for payroll, it's completely forgiven. So we actually encourage people to look at both of them as they're trying to stack their capital to figure out how they can best manage their cash during this um, during this time where they really need to watch what they're spending their money on. So um, you can use for the idle, you can use it for working capital. So if you're a restaurant for say, um, you know, you lost all that food or you donated it. Well, now in order for you to reopen, you have to commit considerable amount of capital to replenish the food so that you have food to cook for your, your customers. Um, the idle is a very good use for that. I'd also be curious to know who was telling you that you could not. Um, if, if you would be willing to uh, maybe share that in the comments so that we can get back in touch with you. Maybe if there's a way we can help um, educate whatever sources is getting that information out. Thank you, Jeremy. Bobby. Yes, thank you. Uh, next question is um, from Frank watching live. Uh, when, we talked, when we talk about employees, does a business that employs part-time qualify for idle or PPP? Carrie, Jeremy? Yeah, go ahead, Carrie. That's a great one. <laughs> um, you are, actually. So we're looking at it um, to not exceed 500 full-time equivalents. Um, and depending on your agency, you can actually have more than 500 employees. Um, some industries are larger and as long as they meet the small business size standard that SBA has set, you're eligible. Um, what we look at from a payroll perspective is we want you to have your employees at the same level of employment you had before this event. So whether it's 12, 20, 500, we want you to have that same level of employment and then 70, uh, and the cost to cover 75% of correction. Let me step back. If 75% of your loan is what you use to pay that cost, then that loan is forgiven. And and just to be clear, Carrie, it doesn't matter if they're part time. No, it does okay. not. Jeremy, your fingers on your camera. Thank Sorry, you. it's again. That's probably better for everyone else. But I I, I got that. Right. Thank you, <laughs> Bobby. Okay, next question. Uh, we have, uh, can, I, can I have PPP forgiven if I've already laid off my employees? Yes, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, is it that, it's not that easy, is it? If you've already, so this, this is what happened, right? Is uh, a lot of people listened to their HR professionals and said, listen, you don't have revenue coming in. You can't pay your people. The best thing you can do for them is to let them go so that they can uh, apply for unemployment. I heard that story many, many times. And the PPP gives flexibility for those employers that did that for their employees to still receive a full reimbursement. The, st the time standard that we have in on the rules are that you do it quickly. And so um, again, this, this is not something that's forcing you to, this is not the government telling you how to run your business. This is a, so a social safety net that's being provided through banks to smaller businesses to take care of their employees. And so it's not, after eight weeks, there's not a rule that says you have to keep full employment. You will have all the flexibility that you need to go forward or do whatever you need to do to restructure your business, retool. But those eight weeks, uh, the, 
the our federal leaders have asked the small vehicle, uh, businesses to be the vehicle to deliver a social safety net. And so uh, I, that's how you th just think of it this way. As a small business person, you have been asked to save your employees and yourself by but providing- you, Jeremy, yeah. you have to hire them back, don't you? You do all of them. If you want a full right. reimbursement, you hire right. them all back. You never said that. So yes, oh, he I can still qualify, <laughs> but he has to hire them back. Yeah, and if you don't hire them all back, that fraction that you do not hire back will be a, a fraction applied to the loan that would have to be repaid. Carrie, did you want to add to what the, what that as well? Bail him, um, Carrie, I, bail him out. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, you did great. Um, we, we talk and share this information so much that sometimes we forget exactly what we've said. Um, <laughs> but yes, you do have to hire them back in that eight week period. Um, and then you have flexibility to do what's best for your business. What I want to stress is that this is really an unemployment compensation that keeps those employees tied to that business. That's really important that when this is over and we can begin to re resume normal, that those, the talent that that business has is available to be able to ramp up quicker than if they had to go and hire new employees, get them off of unemployment, get them trained, and then resume. And I want to touch on something because this has come up on a lot of calls. Business owners are like, I'm going to have employees and then they're going to sit home because we can't open because we're shut down for stay home, stay, stay safe. Well, here's an opportunity that businesses are never given. Pause the business and focus on what you want that business to be when you come out of this work on protocols procedures maybe some training um you know if it's proving customer service work on things that you can do with that team on building better customer service maybe it's some computer skills get some training to have that, those employees be more efficient let those employees tell you what they think will make that business better and stronger and that time now becomes productive time. It's not just sitting home and watching old reruns of TV. But that's not to say that some businesses do that. Oh, that is correct. That's what right. We're I mean, I, it, the bottom line. The bottom line is, it's it, it's such a foreign concept. You're going to yeah. loan me money, which is forgivable, to pay employees who are staying at home. And the answer to that is yes. Yes, exactly. Al although they have an opportunity to use it productively if they can, as you suggest. Yep. And Bobby, it might be the only time they ever get to do that. I hope. <laughs> Next question. That's true. Um, along those lines, this comes from Debbie, who's watching live. Uh, does that mean I can rehire employees after I receive the money? That's correct. And also from Debbie, does when do the eight weeks start? Is it after I receive the funds? Uh, yes, it is after you receive the funds. So it, I don't know how we do it differently. I mean, we can't. Yes, it's after you receive the funds. That's a great question. Okay. Um, next question we have, uh, how do tribes benefit from these programs? How can they? Well, they're eligible well, for them uh, in many instances. So Carrie or Jeremy, you want to give more uh, color to that, uh, to their eligibility? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's a lot of small businesses on those reservations. Uh, we're, we've been in communication with uh, reservations and economic uh, and their economic development uh, interests, interests in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this is going to be a big help for a lot of them. One of the concerns they have is that when, um, when there is casino based revenue, gaming revenue involved, that they're not currently um, able to apply for with through the PPP. It's all the detail stuff, but any small business is is um, is is going to be able to apply for the PPP. Carrie, did did you want to add anything to that? Um, I do. So often there's some barriers to lending to businesses located on the trust lands because of collateral. 
Well, in these, it, in this case, the collateral is waived. Personal guarantees are waived. So this removes those barriers. So we can do a lot of benefit in Indian country that maybe our regular programs haven't been able to do because of sovereign reasons. Also, I want to note that tomorrow I'll be on a call hosted by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And we're gonna be talking about a lot of the, the ways that we can help um, Native American communities through not only our programs at SBA, but some other opportunities from other interagencies. Okay, Bobby. next question we have from Melanie. Um, I've been accepted for the PPP loan. Uh, I'm not clear if I'm supposed to begin paying my staff again, regardless of whether the state has released us to open our doors yet, or do I wait for the green light from the state? Pay up. I can't. I can't say it better. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you, in fact, if you went too long without paying them, aren't they rendered ineligible? They'd have to. They'd have to pay it back. It doesn't become forgivable. Right. They would. They would lose some of that forgiveness. Uh, and this is from Laura, who is uh, watching live. I don't have employees, which loan should I apply for? The easy rule of thumb is if you're looking for help with payroll, whether it's for employees or for yourself, if you're looking for help paying a lease or a mortgage payment on your business or utilities, you wanna go with the Paycheck Protection Program. If like uh, Carrie had mentioned, your business had perishables that are no longer goods that can be sold, uh, there's a, you, you need help with re, refinishing some equipment, that's, that's going to be something that you want to use the disaster uh, idle loans for, the economic injury disaster loans. So paycheck, go with the PPP, everything else, go with the disaster. Okay. Uh, next question we have uh, from Pat. Uh, we spent all day looking for somewhere to take our PPP application. No luck. Big banks won't take our application because we didn't have a business checking account with them prior to February 15th. Other credit unions and small banks won't take us either. Who is taking applications? Well, again, the SBA website has a list of lenders who are currently available and open for business. I'd need to know more about your personal circumstance to give too good of advice. I presume you had a banking relationship with someone, which is always the best first place to go. And as I indicated earlier, they will be standing up availability of these loans through fintech companies whether you are currently doing work with them or not so that would be the the first line of inquiry that i would make for right you carrie or jeremy um also feel yeah, welcome to call our office we have a list of um so what happens is some of the lenders will open up the windows and then they get so many loans they have to kind of close the window to be able to take time to process those um, and then they might reopen to get more loan applications in. So if you reach out to our office, we'll know pretty close to day by day who has an open window and we can help you go to them at, the, that, that, at that time. But I, Congressman Heck had a really good suggestion. If you're, you're just wanting to get it done, FinTech is now available for processing PPP loans. And, it, whoa, uh, whoa, Jeremy, is it yet? I thought we had a little, little ways to go. Are you telling me that that fintechs are currently processing PPP loans? I I, I believe they are. Uh, Carrie, can you confirm that for me? Um, I'll have to get back to you on that one because I know we had some discussion on a couple particular ones today, um, and I know Lisa White was researching that. And okay. Carrie, are are the fintechs listed on the website of available lenders? along with banks? Um, right now, our find a lender does not have the fintechs on there um, because it's geographically based. And with the fintechs, they're everywhere, right? Um, so what we are trying to do is um, a lot of the different lenders will have like a COVID-19, a paycheck protection program kind of section of their website. And a couple of the fintechs are um, posting that on their websites now so google it yeah i i know that my counterpart 
part, counterpart in New York have been advocating to get those fintechs online uh, quickly. And we had a conversation last night where we, we were talking about them getting online, but both, uh, we'll have to look a little further for more clarifying language um, because obviously Congressman Heck and, and Carrie, um, they're on the ground, they're, they're here and stuff all, this, all the time too. So the, the answer is if they're not already, they will be soon because of their ability to process these loans quickly. Uh, and before we get to the next question I had lined up, we had just a quick question from uh, Elizabeth. How do we find out about the call with tribes tomorrow with Carrie from SBA? Um, let me see if I can, um, let's circle back to that. Let me pull up and see where the registration site is through so that I can provide that for you. Okay. And the, uh, the next question comes from Connie. Uh, have any of the speakers ever owned a small business? I have. I have. Yeah. It's a point of considerable pride. I have started and grown several small businesses. Indeed, I grew, I co-founded a company that we started with two employees and grew to 300 employees. Uh, and let me tell you, um, there are, in my humble opinion, two challenges in life that are unequal, by which I mean, there are no greater challenges than these two. The first is managing in the public sector. It's incredibly difficult to manage in the public sector because you have to manage against conflicting values. And the second is to stand up a business successfully and have more revenue than you have expenses. That's an incredibly difficult undertaking by anybody, anytime, anywhere. Yeah, I, I've had side hustles, but I've never been able to get them off the ground. That's did, really you, did you just say side hustles? Oh, one hundred percent. You said that. Always, I'm risk averse, and so that's why I respect the grit of small businesses so much. I always need to have like a steady paycheck coming in somewhere, so that I could I feel like I'm safe while I'm dipping my toe in the water. But yeah, I'm. I went to law school, guys. I got a master's in public administration. I, I'm broken. Just judge me if you want. I'll, I'll make you feel better. <laughs> All right, Bobby. All right, next question uh, uh, from Laurel. I just applied for the IDLE and have a confirmation number, but don't know what to do now. It's been over a week. Should I call, email, or just wait? The correct answer to that is to wait. Uh, the, the disaster loan program is a point, uh, again, of a, a dynamic problem. Uh, so I know that we haven't gotten information back, but if you have gone through that streamlined process and you've applied for a disaster loan, you will be getting more information shortly. In fact, we've, we have now received confirmation that in the next 24 hours, uh, the, the great majority of those uh, idle, idle disaster loans are gonna start paying out. Uh, so uh, again, we don't have all the information. Once we have it, we'll, we'll share it. But what we do know is that we have uh, announced that, that within the next 24 hours, a lot of those loans will be going out. And you'll receive further information about that. As, as that happens. We have, you know, you've left us contact information. If we, if we have, it's just your, your physical address, you'll get a letter. If you sent us your email, you'll get an email. Okay. Um, looking through for uh, one second. Bobby, how much time do we have left? Oh, we are in the last four minutes. So I think we okay. have time Let's, for- Let me interrupt this. And, yeah. Because I want to make sure that both Jeremy and Carrie have a, a final opportunity to say anything they need, whether it's to reemphasize a particularly important point or to get out there some point of information that the questions didn't happen to reveal. I think it's real important that they'd be given that opportunity. Uh, Jeremy. No, I really appreciate that, Congressman. So we want you guys to stay connected to us. There's a lot of information out there, and some of it isn't right. Um, if you follow us at sba.gov forward slash updates, you can sign up for email updates for when information has been vetted, and it is the process we're using. So I encourage you, if you like email updates, if you like to use Twitter, you can follow us at SBA Pacific Northwest or NW. That stands for Northwest Pacific NW, and you'll get that same information uh, uh, via tweet. But uh, I, I just, 
as uh, the representative for the Pacific Northwest for the SBA, I can tell you how proud I am of my people. Uh, Carrie and her staff have been working long hours over time. They have cried with uh, small businesses as they've shared their stories. It's been, it's been an emotional and a stressful time for my staff. And I just wanna recognize their dedication as civil servants. Uh, and, and it is a joy to work for the SBA. It is a privilege to work for the flag. And it is, um, we take it very seriously that our agency has been asked to um, take such a major role in this recovery. And uh, I just can't speak highly enough of our, our, of our public servants. Uh, please call us, call our resource partners, SBDCs, Women's Business Centers, our uh, SCORE chapters. They're all there to help you with your small business needs and goals. Whether you, you, know, you just started, you're growing, you wanna get into new markets, that is why this agency exists. Carrie, what would you like to add? Um, I just want them to know that we know what they're going through. And, you know, SBA is here every day of the year for everyone who is everywhere in our district and across the nation. And as you heal from this, um, this is this is kind of the first phase, the survival phase. There's going to be a follow on phase where you can become even better, stronger. Um, we are there, just like Jeremy described with the resources. So always feel welcome to reach out to our office. We have a great team and um, we don't have a purpose without our partners, without our lenders and without small businesses. So I'm just honored to be able to serve you. Carrie, did you find the tribal call in information? Um, it's actually tomorrow, I guess it looks like it's for tribal leaders and interagency, but there's public ones coming up. So what we'll do is we'll make sure we get those posted to our website at sba.gov backslash WA. We have a calendar of events. We'll get it posted there so anybody in the public can see that. Um, I believe that Jeremy probably gave you the sba.gov update. Okay, so if you subscribe to that, you'll get on our newsletter and we always have great information. So finally, I wanna thank both Jeremy and Carrie very, very much for giving up your time. I know you are trying to get out this information almost 24 seven and that you would join us and for the people that I work for, my constituents, also known as the bosses. I want you to know how personally grateful I am and for all of you out there who are dealing with these incredible challenges, I have a point of view about where we are now. Uh, my point of view is this, we're in the soup, but we're in it together. And I've lived long enough to see us come through an awful lot of challenges. And I'm confident that we're gonna, live, we're, we're gonna get through this challenge. I'm also confident that what the Congress has tried to do to help you deal with this circumstance uh, thus far is not the end of the help that we intend to provide. So. Finally, thank you again, Jeremy and Carrie, and thank you all for joining us very much. Thank, thank you. you. And this ends the live stream. Thank you everyone for joining us.